YouTube, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie, and it's time for the first update of September. Um, so what is going on with my reading? Well, I opted to DNF another book, sadly, and that is a fine balance. Um, so I feel, I mean, I hope you guys aren't disappointed by that because I don't know if you guys are more likes that book or wanting me to read it, but I, you know, I feel like you shouldn't be afraid to DNF a book. Unless, I know there are some people that have reasons, like, there's people who do rant reviews to entertain us, which are fun, I gotta admit, especially if you agree with them, or you don't really care about the book, but you've been, you know, you're aware of it. <laughs> they can be very entertaining, seeing these rant reviews, so, um, and then also, I know there's people that are review professional reviewers and then of course if you're a student and it's an assigned reading and I understand that might be a reason that you won't DNF a book but if you're just you know reading for yourself for fun then I feel like you shouldn't have to waste your time on a book even though I felt a little bad especially because Grimes and Wrath is a classic and then a fine balance is I feel like it's an important book um, to read because it's about a very terrible time in Indian history in India. Um, and like Kim from the middle of the book march, I think she did say something in her video when she mentioned the book that yeah, it's a sad, miserable book. Um, but I thought at the time I would try it, and because I bought it, and I do like, like the writing is beautiful, and I like the depth. She go this the author goes into about the characters and really explain where they come from and everything. I like those details and but I just I wish there was a sense of hope. Like, you know, like books like Les Miserables is a very it has a lot of sadness, but there does to me it also feels like there's a sense of hope in that book. Like whether it's through their love story or, you know, there's the themes of Christianity and God in that book and how, you know, um, finding God and everything and redeeming yourself. There's all of that. And then there's also humor in the book with the Tenardiers. You know, there's a lot, they're conning people out of their money and stuff like that. That adds some humor to the story. So that's, of course, you know, I was thinking about that and thinking if someone quite was like, well, you love that book and you enjoyed that book or what I've read so far and the musical and everything, but yet you can't read this book of fine balance and it's like I said my argument to that is like I said Les Miserables I feel like Les Miserables I feel like has a little bit of hope in it and um but you know I don't I feel like it wouldn't be fair to pressure me to read a book you know if I wasn't feeling that book um and plus I was thinking about other books as well at the time I wanted to read other books first I wanted to read the John Adams bio continue with the John Adams biography um which I will talk about that in a little bit and then I also was thinking about some of the Russian literature I bought recently like um well this one in particular was not that recently The Idiot by Dostoyevsky and then I bought Demons by Dostoyevsky in this particular edition which I guess Vintage is maybe a publishing company or a publishing a little, you know, or something there. They publish different types of vintage books. Um, because I see Vintage all the time. They're like, is that the same? Th are they all part of the same thing? <laughs> um, because, like, you also have those ones with the French flaps and the pretty borders and all that. Like, my, on, my audition of Anna Karenina. And Master Margarita, that is also considered vintage editions. So I don't know if it's all the same thing or what. But, um, and then I also bought um, Demons by Dostoyevsky in this version. And then um, Life and Fate in a different version by a different author whose name I don't remember at the moment. Um, so I couldn't decide between those three, you know, first, and I was kind of thinking, no, I should pick up this one because this is the first one out of the three that I bought, um, and I bought it, I think, a lot. I actually think I bought this one last year, and, or earlier this year. So I actually commented on, because I've been trying to get more into commenting on videos, 
and I commented on um, a video, a vlog that Bella from Throne of Pages was making. And she was saying, and then she said she had heard a lot about The Indian now. It was a good book. Um, I should read that one. And I figured, well, there you go. Because, I mean, especially since it's the first one out of the three I bought recently, you know. So, and oh my god, I love, so far I'm really enjoying it. Especially because there's a character, the main character, Prince Mishkin, is, it's heavily implied that he might be autistic. Um, there's a lot of traits about him that feel very autistic-like. Um, and my, th my belief is that just because they didn't talk about it, or they didn't, un you know, like, I think a lot of things like autism probably still existed back then. It's just they didn't understand or didn't know what it was, weren't aware of it, didn't talk about, you know, didn't understand enough to be able to talk about it, didn't have the medical tools to talk about it or to understand it. So, um, and... I also think that maybe Dostoevsky might have known someone like this, possibly. I mean, maybe not. Maybe there's a chance he didn't. But I feel like the way he's writing about it so far makes me think maybe he did know someone that was actually like this character. Um, but maybe not. Um, but I feel really bad for this character because Prince Mishkin, because he is constantly being called an idiot and people just don't understand him. Um, and they're constantly, you know, and I feel like going by the back description, he's going to be used a lot and manipulated a lot. And because he's just honest and just so sweet and like, it's just, you feel so bad for him because he doesn't understand. He doesn't know any about why these people are, but he does, you know, he's like, I don't appreciate you calling me an idiot. Whenever people call him that, he's he tells them, I am very intelligent, because idiot is, you know, a person, like, you know, might see that an autistic person, such as myself, would see that, and this character would be able to think of it as, oh, you're challenging my intelligence, and autistic people are, usually, they have one special subject matter that they know a lot about that they're very passionate one of his is calligraphy he he really has a knowledge on calligraphy oh, sorry i can't say that word um and just he tells these stories and stuff about like these keep you know things he's witnessed and experienced that are intriguing to him and it's just people are, you know, judging him and don't understand him. And like I said, it makes me think he's autistic. So I feel like I'm actually relating to this character. I, you know, I'm really connecting with this character. You know, which doesn't happen all the time, you know. There are situations where I don't always connect with a character. Like, especially like in the fantasy genre, there's no guarantee I'm always going to relate. I mean, they're all relate in some way, possibly, but... But anyway, this is this is so great. I'm so happy, especially in older books, seeing a character that might identify as autistic. But it's not just the contemporary story about kids going to high school, you know, or middle school. It's, you know, people in the adult world. Because I'm not a teenager anymore. I'm not a student anymore. So it's kind of nice to read stories about adults that might be autistic in the fictional world. Plus the fact that it's so far away from my time period in my world that it's like it it still manages to be escapism for me so i'm also okay now so let's talk about john adams so it's hard to talk about this because it's a non-fiction biography but i mean in a way it is still a story it's a story about this one person this historical figure's life um we're back in france again um and Abigail has realized they, you know, her husband had been so far apart that either he needs to come home or she needs to go see him. And she's kind of scared because she's never left Massachusetts and the idea of traveling by boat to another country is terrifying. But eventually there's something that happens, I don't remember what, that makes her, persuades her, okay, you know what, I'm just going to get, just go, just do it. And they bring their daughter, Nabby along with 
And I feel kind of bad because Nami, you know, she had a chance for a suitor, this guy, but there were all these things, these rumors about him. So Abigail didn't know what to do. So she writes her husband about it. And of course, you got, this is basically, you know, the only communication is through letters. Because they don't have cell phones or email or anything like that. Or, so it's, you know, there's no guarantee that it won't get to them on time you know so and abigail when we when we finally get to france with abigail she she loves her home and everything but and it's a beautiful country but you know there's the culture and communication is difficult for her um so that was so you know she is a lot like john adams in a lot of you know in ways like they both have very mixed feelings about france when they get there and then also, they both like the high seas traveling, you know, they end up realizing they actually like traveling by boat. And, um, but the difference being that Abigail actually doesn't mind being out there on deck and watching the ocean. Well, John and Adam, well, John can't. Um, uh, yeah, it'll be so good to read, once I finish with this, it'll be really great to read the letters. Continue to pick up the letters again between the two of them, because I have the paying classics editions of letter the letters they exchange between each other um but yeah that will be nice to read so so yeah john Adams i've been reading in bed but now i finally have three days off which will be nice to have three days off because i mean i've had multiple days off of course but it's been like last week it was basically like having working and then having a day off working and having a day off so being off every other day so that kind of is annoying because it's like it feels like a little bit of a tease it's like oh i have a day off but i have to go back to work the next day so i kind of prefer having multiple days off in a row one right after the other and right now i'm on my a three day three days off um so which is nice and a relief after having this busy and then this is a holiday weekend labor day so we had very it was very busy the last few days um so but it could still you know there's still a chance then so i'm anxious like oh oh my god what if work calls me because i don't feel like i have to say yes and come in that i don't want to so i want to enjoy my day off but then i'll feel like i have to you know because it's going to be crazy it might be crazy but knock on wood um but anyway so that's how it is going with my reading today um i'm gonna see what i can get done in these three days and like i said unless they call me in um I would love to know what you guys are reading. Feel free to share in the comments below or to tell me what you're reading. I would, you know, um, I will tell you if I'm familiar with it or, you know, or if it sounds interesting, um, to me. And if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe if you haven't, and click the bell notification button, um, if you want to be notified. And I will talk to you all later. All right, bye!